On some ancient maps, Antarctica is illustrated as a land with no ice, and the other continents are located much differently than they are today. Those are the famous 16th century maps drawn by Perry Race, Oronz Fine, Haji Ahmed, and several others. Scientists have been trying to determine at what point in time our planet looked the way it did on the ancient maps, according to geology. The results were so shocking that they still don't get mentioned to this day. Earth looked like this 24 34 million years ago. How is this possible? How did medieval cartographers get information as to how the continents looked long before the appearance of the first human? It is possible that all the evidence in possession of historic archaeological studies is not exactly on the right track. More information can be received from the maps of ancient seafarers, to which belong the famous maps of Harry Race, Oronz Fine, Haji Ahmed, and a whole bunch more, that show the world far more different than it is today. One is the 14th century map drawn by Turkish Admiral Piri Reis. Drawn in 1513 it also shows features of South America which had not been discovered at the time. The Andes, with the Amazon rising in them, are shown, although the Amazon is shown twice, possibly due to source maps being overlapped wrongly, together with the island of Marajo which was not discovered to 1543. The Falkland Islands discovered in 1592 also appear. It shows an island in the Atlantic which does not exist today but where isolated rocks are now found. So, was the map based on a source drawn when sea level was different or and more land was above water? In 1487 the Portolano of Lehudi ibn Benzara was drawn covering Europe and North Africa. It seems to show glaciers as far south as the latitude of England and the Mediterranean as it would appear if sea levels were different due to the ice. Another map was compiled in 1559 by Turk Haji Ahmed. This shows Alaska and Siberia joined by land almost 100 miles wide. Again this shows conditions which existed prior to the end of the last ice age. Claudius Ptolemy's map of the north shows Sweden covered with remnant glaciers that would reflect conditions that existed about 10,000 BCE. This map, which was lost until the 15th century, was drawn by the custodian of the library at Alexandria. He probably had access to many ancient documents and maps lost when the library was destroyed. These maps seem to be evidence of an ancient civilization capable of exploring and mapping the ancient world.
Ancient maps, on which the continents are located differently than they are today, are also illustrated on the Echo Stones discovered in Peru. On the map drawn by Peri Race, South America is connected with Antarctica. And on the maps of Voron's Fine and Haji Ahmed, Antarctica is illustrated as a land entirely free of ice. And if we take into consideration Philip Boatch's map, Antarctica is illustrated as two separate islands. According to geophysical research, today we know this to be true. But researches began in the 60s and became popular to the public at the end of the 20th century. So how did the ancient snow of this back in the 14th, 15th, and 16th centuries? Why is Antarctica connected with South America? When did they split apart? When was Antarctica entirely free of ice and split into two islands? At what point in time did it have rivers? According to different sources, South America and Antarctica split either 24 or 34 million years ago. Antarctica existed as two islands more than 30 million years ago. And Antarctica, free of ice, existed about 25 million years ago. I am not talking about a specific time frame, just a rough estimate. And then, 16 million years ago, almost full ice coverage began on Antarctica and it resembled today's continent a bit more, and 5 million years ago, it was entirely covered in thick ice and was the same as it is today. If we believe that ancient cartographers were suddenly motivated, then the illustrations were copied from much older maps, which by some miracle have survived for 30 million years. the Rig Veda, and in Vaishvanar of a race of space aliens, and in the Book of Enoch, these creatures are guards who descended to Earth and cartographed it. We believe this to be a wonderful example of when one is working at the border of geology and folklore and this allows for the deciphering of the mysterious maps. are descriptive enough, but also contain depictions of near-Earth objects, so it is quite possible that these maps actually did exist millions of years ago and in some way, even after all the natural disasters, they were preserved, possibly in some underground structures, and somehow ended up in the hands of ancient cartographers, who did not use them but rather just copied them and made their geographical discoveries based on the copies. But the maps were not entirely accurate since the outlines of Earth at that time have not changed significantly in the last 20 million years, but they have changed. That is why sometimes mistakes were made and other times, 
Unexpected Discoveries These maps seem to be evidence of an ancient civilization capable of exploring and mapping the ancient world.